the Upanishad series Perfection and Imperfection I am not speaking on perfection as against imperfection Imperfection is the way of existence and perfection mind seeks always so these are the two states a poet has said bana bana ke ye duniya mitai jati hai this world this creation is keeps on created and then is true bana bana ke ye duniya mitai jati hai जरूर कोई कमी है कि पाई जाती है सर्टनली देर इज समथिंग इम परफेक्ट इन इट दैट्स वाई दिस प्रोसेस ऑफ क्रिएशन एंड डिसल्यूशन कंटिन्यूज अ मास्टर एंड अ वीकेंड वन अ बुद्धर हैज टू गो थ्रू द फेजेस एंड he wants to give the final touches to the image of the new man that he is trying to paint or for the transformation of new consciousness and birth of new man it is true that he is always in the last phase trying to finish touches here and there to the image of new man however this work is not like that of a painter it is not that i am painting something and i can complete the painting it is a long painting and i have to go on giving touches to the painting even when i am breathing my last and even then the painting will remain incomplete in life only neurosis asks for perfection this is imperfection and imperfection is beautiful perfection is another name i have heard once a guest was visiting a maharaja's palace and maharaja was showing him around indeed it was a beautiful palace at a certain place the king stopped where the wall was incomplete he drew the attention of the guest and inquired do you see the wall there that is incomplete the guest inquired why have you left that wall incomplete the king replied the palace was made by my grandfather and this is the tradition in our family that nothing should be made perfect some sort of imperfection should be left so that the coming generation remembers that life goes life does not allow perfection imperfection is not something bad instead imperfection is the root of growth imperfection can only be the end death once something is perfect it has come to an end and that end is death the image that i have started will remain imperfect very near 
because that means there is always a room for improvement. Many masters will come to work on that image. Even though I will go on trying to make it perfect, but it is the very nature of the existence that it can never be perfect. Buddha painted the image. Many who came before, they continued to paint. And the image, every master, every awakened one has to work on giving a few touches here and there. Those who are with me, it is as much they are painting to. When I am gone, you have to continue to paint it. The painting is like the flower garden. It has to go on growing new flowers and new foliage each day. The garden is alive. Never let it be dead at any point. In other words, don't let it become perfect. Make every effort to make it perfect, but do not let it become perfect. Whatsoever you do, put your totality into it. But always remember there is always a room for improvement and that is the beauty of imperfection. Then there is tremendous beauty and always flowing and growing and there comes never a full stop. Never ever comes a full stop. In life we are always in the middle. You do not know the beginning of life and also you will never know the end of life. We are always in the middle. When you were born, this is how you have found the things. Everyone has always been in the middle. It is an ongoing process. A river that goes on flowing that is the beauty of it and the glory of it as well. Not only with painting, instead with everything else, remember it. Accept imperfection as the rule that something becomes perfect only when its end has come. In one of the poems of Ravindranath Tagore, the critics all over the world criticized because it suddenly begins and suddenly ends. There is no beginning, no end. It seems as if it is a middle portion. Something in the beginning is missing, something in the end Two is missing. And when Ravindra was asked, you have been criticized but why are you silent? He did not respond to the criticisms. He said these people do not understand life. Life is always in the middle and my poetry, my book, represents life. Out of nowhere it begins and suddenly disappears and evaporates without giving you the feeling of completion, without giving you any clue. Suddenly it disappears. All of a sudden one day, like one of the myriad waves, you appeared on the ocean of life 
and then suddenly one day, next moment, the wave dissolves. Out of nowhere light begins and suddenly disappears and evaporates without giving you any clue or the feeling of completion. However, the mind is perfectionist. Hence, it always feels uneasy with the heart. It feels uneasy with love, life, meditation and beauty as well. With everything that grows, mind is always feeling uneasy. It is perfectly at ease with mechanisms, with machines that are complete, that are perfect. To me, imperfection is not something to be condemned. Instead, it is something to be rejoiced in, something to be appreciated, because it is the principle of life. Imperfection is the principle of life, the way life happens. All of a sudden, from nowhere, life comes into existence and without giving a clue, it dissolves. Like one of the myriad waves you come into existence one day on the surface of life's ocean and then one day again the wave dissolves. Perfectionism is neurosis. It has its importance. It is mental illness. And the more you try to become perfect, the more frustrated you will become. The goal of perfection has led the entire humanity to burst a state of madness. The whole earth has almost become a madhouse. Instead of perfection, you must aspire for wholeness. Wholeness is more subtle and beautiful, not perfection. Be whole and be total in anything that you do, but never think about perfection. When I say whole, it is a dimension of meditation. You are meditative in whatsoever you are doing in the moment. You have put your total energy into it. At that time, you pulsate with that which you are doing. This is holiness, not perfection. Be whole. Whatsoever you do, do it totally. What is the difference when you do it totally? You are not worried about the results. You did it totally. That is all matters. You are finished. At that moment, nothing more than that you could do. You are not holding anything. You have put all your energy, all that you have known, you are whole into it meditatively. Now if you fail, you fail. If you succeed, you succeed. But whether you fail or you succeed, you are fulfilled all the same. A deep contentment arises because you have done whatsoever you could do at the moment. You have put your total energy into it. The result does not matter. The result matters to the mind. To the heart it matters that I have put my entire energy, all that I had, 
as resources with me I have put into it. You can never be perfect. How can the part be perfect? You can never be perfect whatsoever you do. You can always imagine that it could have been better. And whatsoever you do, you can imagine that better could have been done. I have heard about a great painter. He was 70 years old and one day he finished his painting and as he finished the painting he started crying. His disciple surrounded the master and asked, Master, why are you crying? What has happened? You have created a beautiful painting. The master replied, I cannot see any imperfection in the painting. It seems I am finished. It seems I am finished because I am not seeing any imperfection in it. It seems I have lost my imagination. What a beautiful statement. Such a beautiful painting and he says that I am not seeing any imperfection in it. It seems that I have lost my imagination. Imagination is a state, is the flowering, is the essence of imperfection. It goes on, goes on and on. This is the reason that I am crying. This is the first time I cannot see any defect in my painting. I must have lost my imagination. What a state of awareness or understanding. Because he is not seeing any imperfection or shortcoming, that means I have lost my imagination. A man of imagination always when he is finished with something, he can see what is missing where the shortcoming remains, where the imperfection remains. Imperfection is the way of existence. A master said, Bana bana ke ye dunya mitai jati hai, zurur koi kami hai ki pai jati hai. Certainly there is a shortcoming, that's why it is created and dissolved again and again. It is an unending process. You give a stroke here and there, add a new dimension to it as for your awareness is concerned, but it will remain always incomplete. Whatsoever you do, you can always imagine better. So a perfectionist is always in misery, he is never satisfied. I want you to be Oh, totally, totally into it, whatsoever you do, you do it so totally, but be not concerned with the result. You are only concerned with actions that, and that you are not holding anything, you are not withholding anything, when in love, indeed love totally. In meditation, be totally dissolved into that energy that is flowing. When dancing, be totally in dance and forget the rest. Then something will happen. Forget the dancer. You just become the dance and forget the dancer completely. Whether the dance was perfect or not, is not the question at all. And who is there to decide? Only one thing you have to decide, whether you were totally into it or not. If you were totally in it, 
I say it is perfect. And if you were not totally in it, then it is imperfect. That is what perfection means to me. That is what perfection means to an awakened one. Dance is unique, yet individual expression of creativity. It is not comparative. If you dance, you may not dance like Uda Shankar or any other prominent dancer. If you sing, your singing may not be perfect, but if it emanates from within, it is the proper balance of breathing. It can create a magical effect. Comparatively, your dance may be poorer than Uda Shankar's. But there is a possibility you may be more totally into it than Uda Shankar himself in his dance. Then I will say you are more perfect because it is not a question of form. Instead, it is a question of your inner involvement. If ego drops, then there is holiness. That, then it is total. That is what I mean when I say perfection. I have heard that there was a man during the time of Socrates. His name was these words sometimes become difficult to pronounce. Word of a different language. Let us not be bothered about his name. As I could pronounce it, Elcividus, but I am not sure how it is to be pronounced. He was a perfectionist and of course, he was most miserable man. He was always worried because everything is going wrong. He was so rich that he could purchase anything. But he was not happy because there was always something else to be purchased. Something else to be bought to his something else to be brought to his treasury. He travelled all over the world, but whenever he would come back to Athens, he was, mo he was more miserable than before. One day he came to Socrates and he asked Socrates, Why am I so miserable? Although I have travelled all over the world, I am the most travelled man in Athens, and one would think that travelling gives experience and maturity, but nothing like that has happened to me. I have become more and more miserable, and I go to the far off countries and then come back. But I am not gaining any experience. I am becoming more and more imperfect day by day. Rather than becoming perfect, what is indeed wrong with me? Socrates was silent up to now, just listening to him. When this man had finished, Socrates responded, Indeed you are so miserable because you take yourself always with you. Wherever you go, you take yourself with you and that is the trouble. This time you go alone. Leave yourself in Athens. What does it mean? He is referring to ego sense. 
and if you leave yourself in Athens, then there is a possibility of maturity. If you drop the ego, there is a possibility you may become whole. The moment you become whole, you become whole. You have nothing to do. Then there is no more wound in you. Ego is the only wound. You are healed. Then all wounds disappear. So first ego dissolves and then you because When you become holy, you are holy. Then you are perfect in your total aloneness. You are perfect in your total aloneness, not the way mind looks at it. It is not comparative that you are more perfect than others. It is no question of anything otherwise you are simply perfect. And remember your comparison, your competition is not with anyone else. Instead, with you. How did you performed one moment before. Suppose you are creating a painting or you are working in the kitchen cooking something. You have prepared a dish. After the dish is prepared, you have put your total energy, total understanding and at that moment all the ingredients that were available there, maybe something was missing and you could not find that. But if you are a master chef, even in the absence of that ingredient, you can create the balance with something else. You have a complete understanding of all the spices, all the ingredients. How to find the way to overcome that shortcoming. And when you have finished that particular dish, normally after it is finished you are looking for accolades. I am introspecting. First, in an Indian dish, the aroma that comes to your nostrils, then the appearance of that, is the appearance has any imperfection or a way to improve upon. When its aroma reaches the nostrils, does it create the mystical effect within me? And finally the taste. So immediately, despite the accolades that you get from the people, I know that this particular aspect could be improved upon. Maybe the time that it was put on to the fire, maybe the extent of heat that may be needed, you are able to analyze and prospect and this is the thing. Then you are perfect in your total aloneness, in your effort. There is no Comparative, you are not comparing the dish from today to year or tomorrow, today from tomorrow. Instead, your competition is 
between your last and present. There is no question of anything otherwise you are simply perfect. You are unique. There is no one else like you. You are only like yourself. In your wholeness, you are perfect. And then indeed a deep contentment comes. And this contentment becomes a climate around you. Every moment when you do something, you are introspecting. But whatsoever you have done in that state of totality, wholeness, it will have a beauty of its own, yet still it will remain imperfect. Because you know there is a room for improvement. And that is the essence of the creation. Bana bana ke ye dunya mitai jati hai. Again and again it is created and then dissolves, attains to dissolution. But why does it happen if it is perfect? Zurur koi kami hai ki pai jati hai. You cannot find this. Only a policy can find a shortcoming in it. The moment you do this, the moment you introspect, you get develop a totally a different kind of a vision, different kind of an eye, different kind of understanding. You are happy in your state. And this is the difference that perfection is being total into it. And imperfection is the way the existence continues its life. The way existence continues. The two are the two wings that life has provided, two wings. Perfection, putting your total energy into it, total awareness, total understanding, all that you have into it, you are not holding anything. Yet still you know that there is room for imperfection. There is room for something to be improved upon. And that is the beauty of the existence, imperfection. <laughs>